anyways, back to James Webb. So James Webb telescope is out there. What they've found so far a year and a half in is they found, they found the, for, for right now, the, 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 the oldest galaxy they can find is this red galaxy. That's a hundred times less massive than our Milky way. 33 billion light years away from us and is 320 million years was, was, was created 320 million years after the big bang is what they say. And they can do all these measurements. They can do figure out all these things. And what they've measured on this galaxy is that even though it's a hundred times less massive than our Milky way, it produces stars. Oh, also the scientists in the, in the, in the special said it has a heartbeat has a heartbeat. It has a heartbeat and it's producing stars at, at, at the same rate as our Milky Way galaxy, even though it's a hundred times less massive. Isn't that incredible? To be able to look so far out, so far out, that something that's happening as far as we can see is so similar to something that happens every day in our own world, that we have heartbeats and that, you know, if we're generating, if we, if we want to do a, a metaphor and our assimilation it's you know are our, our, our thoughts are our, our thoughts are are those the stars you know or what what are these what what are we creating every day right if these galaxies are creating stars all the time you know that that happens with us and 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 and, and i and i feel I just feel i feel it in my heart I feel it in my soul that we are so similar to that and 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 if we just give our chance selves a chance give ourselves a chance give ourselves a chance to 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 feel that as a potential you don't have to know it you have what but you know so 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 many times we have to know things right we have to know things and we have to we have to see it before we believe it and, you know einstein has a quote he said everyone knew it was impossible until someone that didn't know came along and did it Four minute mile, you know, that's an example. You know, there, there's all these things that happen out there because we're 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 conditioned with with all of these restrictions and all of these constraints and all of these limits. We we get we get we just operate as we normally do. And we don't know any better. I mean, I I, I think that's that's the truth, is that we generally just don't know any better. Right. And so if we gave ourselves a chance to kind of remove all of that. And and just and just be and just try and you know take everything at at face value for as it is, and and not so much as to how 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 we told it is told it is and told that it should be, you know give ourselves an opportunity to think about it, give ourselves the opportunity to be in awareness, be in an awareness to say hmm, let me think about this, let me let me think about how that might work. So going back to James Webb, right? We talk about we talk about we talk about the fact there's this galaxy way out there, like literally the furthest galaxy that we could find that right now has a heartbeat and is generating stars at the same rate as our Milky Way galaxy, even though it's a hundred times less massive, which is incredible. And when they're interviewing the 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 head the head gentleman of of the entire program, you know, he says he basically says, well, you know, all, all that we see is only four percent or five percent if we're lucky as to what we see 95 percent is dark matter so we don't even know we don't even know any of like it's it we only see five percent of, of what of all that is that's all we see that's all our that's all we're able to kind of uh with 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 our with our light spectrum ability to transmute that into what we see that's all we can see so instead of trying to know everything, can we, what if we started operating from feeling? What if we tried to, what if we just tried that, try to operate from feeling and, and, and try to connect with our intuition and try to trust that. Right. And, and so talking about something that's so big on such a massive scale as, 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 as the universe, as, as to, you know, being in a place where there's 130,000 galaxies of billions of stars all around us. The, the head of the the head of the the head of the entire program says that and and he also says something which i thought was incredible as one of the closing statements he said we thought it was out there we hoped it was out there and now we see it so these are scientists that need to see things to believe things but if you listen to words the words the gentleman just said he says we thought it was out there we hoped it was out there, so I had a thought, 
had a feeling of hope, and then they see it. Are they surprised? I'm not surprised. <laughs> they, found, they found exactly what they were, what they had thought and what they had felt. They see it now. How incredible. How incredible. And we have something that's so massive and something that's so expansive. And then we have something so simple as the electron. So simple as the electron. I didn't know what an electron was. And, you know, I, I guess I, I'll say that I, I, I knew what I knew what one was when I was in school and I was tested on it. And I was forced to kind of have a definition. But but I came across an article the other day published by scientists that have been working for decades, decades again to 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 measure and find imperfections in the roundness of an electron. Right. and these scientists are incredible to have achieved the feat of gaining a level of accuracy that if an electron was the size of Earth and there was an imperfection the size of a sugar crystal, it would find that imperfection. Isn't that incredible that we can measure to that level of accuracy? And you know what they found? They found that it's rounder than they thought. They found zero imperfections. They found that it is it is more perfect of roundness than they ever could have conceived. And their comments were, we're going to keep trying to find that imperfection. <laughs> go, you go do that. That sounds wonderful. So not only is an electron perfectly round as far as we can measure, but an electron also has no mass. What does that mean, no mass? What is an electron? How does this even work? Why should I care about an electron? Well, an electron carries a negative charge, and an electron is, 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 a, is, is, a, is a critical element to literally everything that has mass has an electron paired with it. Anything that we see, anything that's in our, in our universe has an electron that, that, is, that is part of it, as in ha carries that negative charge. The, the, the total, the, to the, the, the net total charge of the universe as defined by science is zero. So the electron carries a negative charge and protons and neutrons and, and, and all those other points kind of make it, make it to where it's always an equal amount. So there's always an equal amount of neutrons to, to, to offset those, those, those positive charges. So we have an electron that's perfectly round as far as we can measure. We have an electron that has zero mass as far as we can measure, where our entire world and everything we operate on is based on mass and, and forcing things and, you know, that kind of stuff. So we can't, when, 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 when an atom is measured, they don't even account for any weight of any electrons, no matter how many there are, there are when, they, when, they weigh, when they weigh atoms. And then these electrons, guess where light comes from? As, as electrons, as electrons go, go inward, they emit light. They give off energy as an, as an inward towards the nucleus. And, and, as, and as electrons go outwards, they, they, they consume energy. They consume that, 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 that energy that, that's around them. And, and so, you know, when, when, when people say, and, and it's a saying that happens often is, you know, oh, this person lit up the room. They were incredible, right? Oh, my God, they were incredible. Like, like, how could that not be something similar that we can correlate, right? And, and, say, and say that there's a similarity there, that something might be connected there, right? Da Vinci, one of the greatest artists of the last 500 years, he's probably still has the most famous painting, Mona Lisa, since, you know, he painted it 500 years ago, said, where the spirit and the hand do not work together, there is no art. Einstein says where the uh, art is when one hand is in the universe and one hand is in this world and we act as the conduit of passing energy. All these people that are, we, we, we classify as the most, some of the most influential that have ever walked among us. They're saying all of these things, all of these things. And they're feeling all of these things. They're trying to, to, to express in words things that, 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 that so many of us don't even come across in our lifetime unless, unless we're open to it. If we try, just gave it the chance, 